Okay, so let's start. Okay, guys, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, um, last times in chapter four here, um, chapter four, we are explaining uh, three different ways to analyze uh, resistive circuits. Okay. Uh, so, quickly, in the first approach here, we call it branch current method. So the three approaches is they use the same idea. Okay. Number one, we number one we define some unknowns. Okay. Once I find the unknowns, I can I can calculate everything in, in the circuit. Everything here I mean the current and voltage everywhere. Okay. Then once then I need to create or I need to find equations to find these unknowns. And usually I use Kirchhoff current law, Kirchhoff voltage law to make these equations. And then I solve this equation to get the unknowns. All of this is the same idea, okay? The difference is that here, how can uh, the unknowns are different? So for example, in the first approach here, we call it branch current. Because the current in every branch, these are the unknowns I wanna find. So here the current in, in this branch here, I1. The current in this branch is I2. The current in this branch is I3, okay? And these are the nodes. When, once I find I1, I2, and I3, I can find everything else because I can I apply a Ohm's law to find the voltage here, voltage here, voltage here, okay? So here I give you an example, how can we do that? In this approach, you need to apply Kirchhoff current law and Kirchhoff voltage law to, to be able to get the equation I need here, because I have three unknowns, I need to find three equations, okay? So here, Kirchhoff voltage law will give me one equation, Kirchhoff voltage law will give me one equation, At this node, Kirchhoff current law gives me also another equation. I need three equations to solve this equation, to get I1, I2, I3, okay? So this one, this was one approach. And another approach, The second approach we call it node node voltage method. You can take from the English name why we call it node voltage simply because the unknown the unknowns we need to find is the voltage of the nodes, and this is exactly what it is. So if you have a circuit like this one, this node here, this voltage is unknown. The voltage here also is unknown. So here the unknowns are different from the unknowns of the previous approach, okay? And then here, here we use current Kirchhoff law in order to get equation. We don't use current voltage law in this case, okay? Um, usually you don't need it, but but you, we only use current Kirchhoff. But if you want to use Kirchhoff voltage law, it's not wrong, but you don't need to, we don't need to use it, it here, okay? So all that I need to know, I need to find V1 and find V2. Once you find, so here, once you find V1 and V2, you can you can get the current easily because you can apply Ohm's law here to get the current current in R1. You can apply Ohm's law here to get the current in R2. Same thing for R4 and R3. Okay. So so and then we have another approach. I explained last time quickly, so I'm gonna explain it today uh, again, and uh, uh, we will see uh, some examples. But I need to answer a question. Why, why, why we need three approaches? Why is not only one approach? Because all of them are doing the same thing, okay? All, all the three approaches help me to find the current and voltage everywhere, okay? The answer is very simple. It's simply because in, it depends on the circuit, okay? Uh, and there are other, in, in, uh, other reasons I'm gonna explain at the very end of, uh, of this slide. So actually it depends on the circuit. Sometimes it's, it's easier, to use one method over the other methods, okay? For example, if you look here in this example, okay, how we have here, we have two nodes. That means I need only two equations, and that's it, two equations. But if I wanna use the, uh, the branch current or, uh, uh, method, so I need to define an unknown here uh, in, in this branch. I need to define unknown here, I need to define unknown here, and also I need to define unknown here. So in this case, you are going to have four unknowns. You, you understand what I'm saying? So sometimes 
It means that the circuit sometimes one approach is easier than the other approaches. Okay. So let's let's go to I already explained this one last time. So now I'm gonna explain uh, the third approach, which is the mesh current approach. Again, you can tell tell again from the name here because the unknown here. We name actually as yeah, these methods methods are named. Uh, after the unknowns, okay? So here, the unknown here is the mesh current. So let me define what we mean by the mesh, cur mesh current or, or loop, loop current. So here, if you, have a, if you have a circuit like this one, so I have here one loop or, or mesh, we have here one loop or mesh, okay? I'm gonna assume the current in, in this loop is I1. The current here is I2. The current here is I2. So, and these are my unknowns. If I can find I1 and I2, I can give you everything else. But hell, I'm gonna tell you how, simply because the current here is only I1, okay? But the current here, because this, this resistance is, 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 is between, is between uh, 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 these two uh, loops. So I1 is gonna come from here, and also I2 is gonna come from here, this way. So the current here is actually I1 minus I2. So if I can find I1 and I2, I can easily find the current here. The current here in, in this resistance is only I, I2 because this resistance is not, it, it, it is not, the, uh, is not shared with other uh, uh, loops. It's only in one loop. Same thing if the current here is I2, okay? So again, so make it easy. Number one, what are the unknowns here? The unknowns here is the current in, in, in every branch current here and this current here, okay? And um, here, we, we only apply Kirchhoff voltage law. We don't need Kirchhoff current law, only Kirchhoff voltage law, okay? Uh, I just wanna bring this one to your attention. There is a big difference between the unknown here and the unknown in the first case. In the first case, the unknown is actually the current in every branch. So here, this current, this current, this current. Here, we don't use the concept or the idea of a mesh current. The current in one mesh, we don't use it. Here we use the we use the unknown here is the current in every branch. So this is completely different. So for example, here I2 is unknown. Okay. But if I if I if I apply uh, the, uh, the, uh, the third method, the current here is actually is gonna be I1 minus I2. Okay, so because I have I1 here and the I2 here, but here the unknown is actually I2. Okay, so anyway. So, um, so now uh, I need to, I'm gonna apply, I need two equations because I have two unknowns, I1 and I2. I told you we're gonna apply Kirchhoff voltage to here. Also we're gonna apply Kirchhoff voltage here. Uh, so by this way, I can get two equations in two unknowns and I can solve them, okay? So let's see how I made it. So here, uh, let's, uh, you know, uh, I1, I, it's gonna be this way. So the voltage here, you know, in case of voltage low, voltage here plus voltage here plus voltage here plus voltage here is equal to zero. But you need you need to design the sign, okay? You need, you need to select the sign. So for this one, the, it, it's gonna be I1. I'm gonna assume the current is gonna go this way. So I1 times R1, okay? Only I1 is gonna go here. I2, I2 here in, in this branch, okay? So this one is not shared with the other branch. So as you see here, I1 times R1, okay? And because the direction here, this is the, uh, the, the, the direction, I select the direction uh, clockwise. So here's the direction, we are gonna encounter the positive first. So I'm gonna take this one positive. So that's why you can see here, plus Vs2, okay? Now look about the voltage here. How can you calculate the voltage here? Actually, the voltage here, we have I1 coming from here, and we have I2 coming from here. And because both of them are in opposite direction, so the current here is actually I1 minus I2. Because this current is going to come this way, this current is going to flow this way, okay? So as you see here, I1 minus I2 times R4. So this is the last one we have here, because, because we are going to encounter the negative phase, this one has to be negative. So, so now, R1 is given to me, V is 2 is given to me, R4 is given to me, V is this one is given to me. So now I have equation in I1 and I2. This is the first equation. I need one more equation. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat the same thing. I'm gonna get it from here. 
let's again I'm gonna apply Kirsch voltage low so let's let's take the voltage here the first first one here R2 so this one actually R2 times I2 so I1 is not here I1 is only here I1 I uh, here uh, in this resistance the current is I2 and I2 so it's gonna be here R2 times I2 you can see here R2 times I2 okay here because we are gonna encounter the negative first so this one has to be negative which is negative V3 this is here uh, here the current here in, in R3 is actually uh, I2, so it's actually I2 times R3, as you see here. Okay. Um, for this one here, because we are going to encounter the negative first, so this one has to be negative, as you see here. Okay, so what, what, about, what about the voltage drop here? So here we have current I2 this way, and then we have I1 this way, okay? So this current, if, if you assume this is a positive, this is a negative, so I2, minus i1 i2 minus i1 okay so here i2 minus r1 times r4 okay so by this way as you see here i have everything except i1 and i2 i can make two equations and then i can solve the two equations yeah so after i solve the two equation i found that i1 is negative 0.67 i2 is positive 2.67 so what does this means it means actually uh, what positive and negative here means? It means I2 is gonna flow, it's gonna go this way, it's correct, but in reality, I1 has to be actually the other side here, okay? Uh, so now, uh, I got I1 and I2, so uh, I need to find what is the current here. The current here is I1. So here I assume, I assume I1 is gonna be this way, but in reality, it has to be the other way, okay? Or, I know this part is confusing students. I, okay, I can say, I'm gonna assume the current this way and the current is negative. Yes, I can say it this way. Or I can assume the current this way and the current is positive. You got what I'm saying? So here the current here is I1. So I can assume the current is gonna go this way and it is actually negative 0.67. Or I can, I can make it the other side. You can give it negative, that's okay. Or you can mix the other side and then you can say, if the current is gonna flow this way and it is positive, okay? Um, so I know the current here, I1, I can multiply by R1 to get the voltage here. So this one is done. For this one also, this easy. I know the current I2, so I can multiply I2 times R2 to get the voltage here. This one also is easy. I have I2, so I can multiply I2 times R3 to get the voltage here. Yeah, this one here, as I told you, as I told you um, is if, if you assume, assume the current, uh, if you assume this is supposed to exist, so it should be I1 minus I2. Or if you if you flip it, if you assume this is supposed to, this is a negative, so actually it's gonna be, uh, this is I2 minus I1, okay? Yeah, so I'm, that's what I'm explaining with you. Once you have the current, you can easily get the voltage. Here for, for number four here, I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna assume the current is gonna flow this way, okay? It's gonna come this way. So that's why it should be I1 minus I2, okay? When I calculate it, I thought it is negative. That means, because this one is negative, that means actually it has to be the other side. But I can keep it this way, it's not a problem. So if I assume, if I say the current is this way is negative, it's the same thing if I say the current is gonna be this way and it is positive. Any questions? Okay, so I didn't make a quiz today. The quiz will be on Thursday because the quiz will be, um, if you go to, yeah, 4.1, the circuit will be very close to this one. I will make very minor change. It's not gonna be identical, but I, I will make very small change on this one. And then I will ask you to write the equations of the three approaches. That's why I, I postponed, I delayed the quiz until Thursday. Okay, because I I didn't I did uh, last time I did not finish the third approach. So I'm gonna ask you to write the equation using the three approaches. Yes. So it's a new methods. That's what you have to do. The quiz. <laughs> do you want to meet solve the quiz here? So <laughs> so <laughs> you got them saying. So I will leave this one to think about it. It's gonna be exactly the same thing like this one, but I'm gonna do just very little exchange in the circuit. You got what I'm saying? So when you go home, 
I already give you a lot of examples for the other methods. You just go in this one, okay? But it's not going to be identical. I would make very, very small change. Yes. So you're going to want us to set up the equations? Or yes. Solve no, no, no. You just write the equations, okay? Thank you. Because it's the most important part. So solving the equation, if you go to my lab or any any program online, or uh, if it's the most important part, is how to find the equation. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Uh, let's have more examples of this approach. So, for example, uh, let, let's have this example here. In this in this case, we have three three loops. So we have one loop here, as we see. We have one loop here and we have another another loop here. So let's see how can we do it. Okay. So so now how many unknowns you I have you have? I have three unknown three unknowns. I1, I2, I3. I have three unknowns. So I need three equations to solve them to get to get I1, I, I2, I3. Very simple. I can apply here Kirchhoff voltage loop here. This gives me one equation. I can apply Kirchhoff voltage here, give me second equation. Kirchhoff voltage here is going to give me a third equation. Very easy. Okay? So let's start with the first one here. I'm going to apply Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff voltage loop here. So again, the voltage here plus the voltage here uh, of this resistance plus the voltage here is submission is equal to zero. But let, now let's decide which which one is positive, which one is negative. Okay, let's here, as you see here, because for this one, because we are going to encounter the negative, negative first. So this one has to be negative, as you see here. For for this voltage source, because we are going to encounter the positive first, so this one has to be positive, as you see here. Okay. So what is the voltage drop here? So it's actually let's see what is the current here. What is the current here? The current here is actually I one this way minus I two this way because this one is uh, this one is shared between a loop one and loop loop two. Okay, that's why the current here is actually I1 minus I2. Okay, so I1 minus I2. Okay, so I finished the first equation. Uh, let's uh, let's do yeah, or, or let's do here this equation here in uh, in this here. You can see here the voltage drop here plus the voltage drop here plus the voltage drop on this resistance submission is equal to zero. Okay, so let's do them one by one. What, what is the current here in this one? The current here is actually I2 times 3. Yeah. What is the current here in this one? So this one, I is going to be I, I, I2 minus I3. I2 minus I3, because this one shares between loop number 2 and loop number 3. So I2 minus I3. And you can see it here. What about the here, the current in this one? Okay, so this one is actually I2. Okay, minus I1, I2 minus I1. Maybe there is some, a point here may confuse you. I, I'm going to say it, hopefully I, I'm not confused. Listen to me. When I calculated the voltage drop here on this resistance in this, in this loop, I set the current I1 minus I2. So that I take this one positive, I take this one here negative. I'm assuming the current is going to flow this way. So I said, I1 minus I2. But when I came to here in, in loop, loop number two here, I said, because again, I'm going to consider this a positive, this is negative. You got what I'm saying? So here I said I2 minus I1. Don't be confused. Okay. So here what I did when I was in this loop, I assumed this is a positive, this is negative. When I came here, I'm, I'm trying to follow the same direction here. Okay. Hopefully, I'm not, you are not confused. Okay. You can, if you want to fix it, yes, you can fix it. You can assume this one is positive, this negative. And then when you come to here, you can say I1 minus I2. But because the direction here is from negative to positive, so this one has to be negative. The voltage loop has to be negative. So at the end, it's going to be I2 minus I1. But anyway, so, uh, so hopefully I didn't confuse you more. OK, so actually, but just I want to bring this one to your attention. Uh, so now I have a second second equation here in I1, 2, and 3. I need one more equation because I have three unknowns. So I can get one equation from here. So the voltage drop uh, 20 plus the voltage drop on this resistance plus the voltage drop on this resistance, resistance equal to zero. Okay. So here, because we are going to encounter the negative first, so this one has to be negative 20. Okay. 
the current here is, is I3 minus I2, I3 minus I2. The current here is only I3. This would I3. Okay? Again, as you see here, and now I have three equations. I can solve the equations. Once I solve the equation, I can find it. I can find anything here. The voltage, I can find anything. Okay. Any questions? Actually, here I'm asking you to find the current here, IL. Okay. IL is actually equal to I3. So once I find I3 here, so it's the same thing like I. Let's have one more. Any questions? Okay. So in this example, uh, in the other in the previous examples here, we, we have only voltage sources. So I want to show you here. If we have a current source, how, how this would be different if you have a current source, okay? Actually, this will make, make it easier. So you will see how, how, how we can deal with this situation. Again, what is the difference between this example and the previous examples? It's a previous examples. It's a circuit. It's a circuit uh, have only uh, both sources. Now, we have here one current source here, okay? You will see right now how, how this this kind of source will make, make it easier here. You will see. In this case, in this specific case. So, uh, so again, we have three loops. So I have here one loop here, we have one loop here, and we have one loop here. Okay. So as, as I explained before, we have uh, we have three unknowns. The current here in this loop is I2, here I1, I3. So I need to find these, these three unknowns. So again, uh, I can we need we need to make we need to make three equations. Is that okay? However, I one I can calculate I one easily without without a block, without easy, even the need the need for an equation. I'm going to tell you why. I two uh, sorry I two. Let's start for example with I two. So here I two here. So the current here I two. The current here I two. The current here sorry the current here I two minus I one. The current here is I2 minus R3, but the current here is I2. And it's already given to me, it's 0.5. So that means I, I2 is not unknown. I can just say in this specific case, because the current here, current here is I2, okay? And, and I know this one is 0.5, so I can, I can say I2 from this loop, I2 is equal to 0.5. That means I don't need three equations, so having Having a current source here, okay, make it easier. Why? Because the current here is just I2. So, I, you know, if, if this current source here, the situation will be different. Because if this current source here, so the current, the current here in this current source is actually I2 minus I3. So, I, I'm going to have equation in I2 and I3. But because I have a current source here and I know the current here is I2. The current here is I, I2 minus I1. The current here is I2 minus I3. And I2 is, is 0.5. So actually, I do need, I, I don't, I, I2 is, is already known. It's 0.5. I, it's not, it's not unknown. So I need only two equations for I1 and I, I3. Okay. So again, I can apply here Kirchhoff voltage law. I can apply here Kirchhoff voltage law. Uh, that's it. So after that, you are going to have two equations. You need to solve these two equations. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it quickly. So here, if 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 in loop one, if I apply Kirchhoff voltage law in, in, in loop one, so here uh, I one times eight, okay, plus I one minus I three times twelve, okay, plus I one I one minus I two, which is zero point five, so minus zero point five times six. So this is one equation. The second equation is uh, another equation you can get it from here. Uh, the current here is actually I3, I3, okay, minus I2, I2, which is 0.5 uh, times 8. Here is this one, the current here in the 12 ohms is actually I3 minus I1. So both, <laughs> both of them are unknowns, okay, and then plus 6. By this way, I can. So all what I have here. Two equation uh, in two unknowns I can solve this. Okay, so let me let me tell you the conclusion. Here. The conclusion normally in, normally in a case like this one I need three equations, but because I have a current source here and the current in this current source is equal to I two, so because of that 
I, I do it, it's known, and, and I only need two equations, okay? Yes? The um, current source was shared. Yes, and, uh, I think we have, let me check if I have this example here. Yeah, we have this example we're going to talk about. This is okay. If it is shared, so in this, in this case, we have that. So it's going to be I1 minus I2 equal to 5. Sorry, it's always I2 because this is a this is a positive direction. I2 minus I1 equal to 5. But here, because this one is not here, it's just I2. So this was easy, right? So we will see the other case. But let me, I'm going to ask another question. What if the direction is down? Okay, so in this case, I would say, so the direction is not up, no, it's down. So in this case, I'm going to say I2, I2 is equal to negative 0.5. You got it? If the direction is down, I would say I2 is equal to negative 0.5 instead of 0.5. Anyway, let's let's have another another example here. So it looks like yeah, this example is very close to the previous example. All what I did, I just put here. I put I put the current source here in in, in the middle here. Okay. So uh, I will. I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I'm gonna solve this uh, example in the traditional way. Okay, I will find it may be I'm gonna have four equations. I'm gonna give you one. Usually we should have three, right? We have we have three loops. I should have three. I should have three equations. Okay, but in this case, in the normal way, I'm gonna have four. I'm gonna tell you why, and then I'm gonna make a small trick uh, using what we call sober uh, sober mesh. Okay, uh, and then I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it only three equations. So this is very close to I had I think I had one example here about sober node. You remember I think yeah I had here one example about sober node. Also here I made a trick so that I can reduce. So here without this trick, so how I I have four equations one two three and the current here the current here is unknown. So I have four equations. Okay, so when you have a voltage source connected between two nodes and these two nodes none of them is growing. So in this case, we are going to have one, one more unknown here. When you apply current, uh, uh, curve shift current law, you are going to have, so usually the, in the normal case, the unknowns are V1, V2, and V3. But here, what that's what happened before. That's what I explained before in this case. But here, I'm going to have the current here also going to be unknown because I don't know this current, okay? So that's why we, we took this one like one node, okay? To, uh, to, uh, to, if you don't do that, you are going to have, you need four equations because V1, V, V2, V3, plus the current here also will be unknown. Exactly the same thing I'm going to do right now here. You will see what I mean. So let's start with the traditional way. How can you solve it? Yeah. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the traditional way. And you will see right now, because I have a current source, not voltage source. So in case of uh, the node, node, uh, node method, the voltage node method, it's, it's a problem, it's a voltage source, not the current source. But here's a problem happens when you have a current source here. Because I have a current source, and then I'm going to apply Kirchhoff voltage law. So the voltage here is unknown. This is a problem. But anyway, you will see right now. But again, let me go back. I just want to link, very important to link this example with the example I had before because they are very close. So here, again, because I'm applying Kirchhoff current law. So here, I don't know what is the current here and I don't have a way to calculate it. That's why I, uh, having this voltage source here introduced, introduced a, new, a new unknown here, which is R. But if I have a current, if I have a current, it would be easy, right? So here, usually, if you have a current source here, it would be easy. But if you have a uh, voltage source, a case like this one, it may be more, uh, more, uh, more difficult. Okay, that is why at the very end of these slides, I'm going to tell you, usually this approach, usually this approach is good when you have current current sources. Okay. Uh, the opposite for 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 the mesh mesh current method, it's better when you have uh, both the sources. Okay, but anyway, 
So let's let's have let's uh, do it here. So this is a traditional way. So it's a traditional way, as you see here, guys. So I can have one loop here, one loop here, one loop here. So now I have three unknowns. Okay. You may think that I need three equations. Oh, this is a traditional way. I need three equations. So I'm gonna apply Kirchhoff voltage to here. I'm gonna apply Kirchhoff voltage here. I'm gonna apply Kirchhoff voltage here. By this way, I can get three equations. Yes, you are gonna get three equations. However, because in case of in case of Kirchhoff voltage law, I need to know the voltage here, and this one is, is two. I need to know the voltage here, and the voltage here is I1 times six. So which is okay because I1 is unknown. What is the voltage here? I don't know what is the voltage here, and there is no way to calculate it directly. Okay, so that's why I'm gonna introduce an, an unknown here. I'm gonna call it V. So as you see here, when I created this equation, I took here two. I took here V because I don't know V, okay, and also I1 times six, as you see here. Okay, same thing in this loop as well. Okay, so here I have uh, here the voltage here is V. Here I have uh, I2 times 12, which is here. Also, here I have I2 minus I3 times 2. Okay, so anyway, and then I get another equation. So now you see here I have three equations, but I have four unknowns because. Because having having a voltage, having a current source this way created a new variable because I don't know what is the voltage. I know the current, but I don't know the voltage. So in, so now I, I need one more equation. You got what I'm saying? So how can we, we where I can find the uh, one more equation? Very easy. I1, I1 minus I2 equal to negative 0.5. Okay. Or I can say I2 minus i1 equal to 0 0.5 the difference between these two current equal to 0 0.5 because the current the current here is actually i2 minus i1 so this can be one more equation now you have four equations you can solve them is that is that okay so this is a traditional way so now i'm going to do a trick just to make it to make it easier look how I, that's what we call here super mesh so here we call it super mesh but in the again, I have to link this case with the case of the we had before, and we we, we named it super node. Okay, so if you have here, if you have uh, a voltage source connected between two nodes, I can make I can create what we call a super node. Super node means this is like one node, and then see what is the current enter, enter, entering what what current is out, and then apply Kirchhoff. Consider this everything here like one node. See what, what current input, what current output, and then apply Kirchhoff current law. So instead of, of applying Kirchhoff current law at V3 and V2, no, I will apply it here. Okay? This can make it easier in the calculations. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So instead of making one mesh here and one mesh here, no, I will make only uh, one mesh here and one mesh here. Again, one mesh here this way. I'm gonna apply Kirchhoff voltage law. That's what we call sober, sober mesh. So sober mesh, I can do it when there is a current source between, between shared between two loops in this one. So instead, instead of, of applying Kirchhoff voltage law one time here and one time here, no, I will apply Kirchhoff voltage law one time here, only one time, and Kirchhoff voltage here one time. But wait a second, if you do that, you are gonna have two equations. I need three because I still have three unknowns, which is I1, I2, I3. You got what I'm saying? You didn't solve it. Okay, but wait a second. We have another a gift here. We have a gift. The gift is I1, I2 minus I1 equal to 0.5. This can be the third equation. You got it? So the, uh, if I want to do this way, I can get one equation here. Okay, I can get one equation this way. And also here in the middle here, I have I2 minus I1 equal to 5. This will give me the third equation. So let's see how can we do it. Let's start with the easy one here. This two here, very easy, this two. So here, I3 times one plus I3 times two plus I3 minus I2. So I'm gonna keep I1, I2, but, but when I apply voltage low, I'm gonna apply it here in the outer mesh. Not, I'm not gonna do one here and one here, okay? So here, this one, I3 minus I2 times two. So you can find here, this is the equation we have here. Now, let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law here in the outer here, okay? So I have 
فولت شير ولا ذا فولت شير ولا ذا فولت شير ريزيستنت ولا ذا فولت شير ريزيستنت ايكوال تو زيرو اوكي سو ذا فولت شير از نيجاتيف سو يو كان سي هير نيجاتيف تو ذا فولت شير ان ذيس وان ان ذيس ريزيستنت از اي 1 تايم 6 ذا فولت شير از از اكشولي اي 2 اي 2 تايم 12 ذا فولت شير از اكشولي اي 2 ماينس اي 3 تايم 2 Okay, so by this way, as you see here, I have two equations. Okay, and now the third equation is actually I2 minus I1 equal to 0.5. Okay, guys, by this way, I have three equations in three unknowns. Again, look at the trick. So the trick, the trick is I don't want to apply voltage to here, a kirch voltage to, because if I apply kirch voltage to here, I don't know the voltage, so this will be introduced as an unknown, a new unknown. Okay. Any questions? Anyway, so I, I explained to this example in the traditional way. I explained to why in this case we're gonna have the again, guys. The traditional way is the unknowns I1, I2, I3. So but because this is a current source. It has a voltage. When I apply kirch voltage law, I don't know there's a voltage here. So this one, well, I'm going to have another uh, in new unknown, which is V, the voltage here. Okay? That's, I don't want, uh, or you can make it this way. Still, you can get the same result. It's correct. But it's just more complicated because you are going to have four equations uh, in four unknowns. Okay? Here, just using a simple trick. OK, so we're going to have uh, three equations in three unknowns. Any questions? Okay, so let's have one more example here. Again, how this example? So let me let me tell you how this example are different. So again, in the very beginning, I give you an example here that we have only voltage sources. Okay, and then here same thing. We have only voltage sources, but we have three uh, three loops. Uh, then here I explain to you now uh, we have one current source here in this example. In this example, we have one, one current source, but this one is common between the two mesh uh, between the two meshes as you see here, or two loops. Uh, but again, up, up to now, all the examples are except I explain, they have independent sources. So now I'm gonna explain one example. What if I have a dependent source? Okay, dependent source. So again, it's, it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. So here I have a, I, I, when I have a loop here, we have another loop here. Is that, is that okay? So we have here one node, one loop, and we have another loop here, okay? So I, I'm gonna apply Kirchhoff voltage uh, here, Kirchhoff uh, voltage law here to get equation. I'm gonna get a second equation here. Is, is that okay? So let me ask you a question. Is that two equations are enough? Enough to two equation? I1 and I2? No, there is a problem here. The problem here, because this one is dependent. So this one, this one does not have, uh, it's, it's not a number. As you see here, for example, this one is, is independent. That's why you can see this one just five. But this one is actually function 0.5 IL. You see the problem? So the problem here, if I have if I have a Kirchhoff voltage here, which Kirchhoff voltage here, I'm gonna have two equations and three unknowns. One unknown is I1, one unknown is I2, and then one another unknown IL. Because it, the voltage here is actually 0.5 IL, and IL is here. Okay. But that's very easy. You know what I can do? What I can do, I can try to find the relation between IL. And the two unknowns I have, I1 or I2. Again, guys, very simple. I want to make equations in, in I1 and I, I2 only. But because I have a dependent source here, okay, I found another unknown, I L. Okay? But that's easy. Why it's easy? Because simply I can find the relation between I L and I1 and I2. That's it. So instead of uh, using I L, I'm going to, so here's the current, here is I L. The current here, I2, the current here, I2. So in this specific case, 
I L actually is equal to I two. So I'm happy. So actually, it's only two unknowns. I one and I two. So I can simply find the relation between I L and I two, and now this one becomes four point five I I two. You got it. This is how you should solve such a problems. The way you have to solve it in order to avoid having another unknown here. Uh, you have to find the relation between this current. Okay, it can be a voltage. I'm not sure if you have an example like this one. Uh, no, but it can be. It can be, for example, in the state of I L, this one can be V V V L. V L is a voltage here. Is that okay? Still, you need to do the same thing. I need to find V L in terms of I one or I two because I I need to keep all equations. And only two unknowns, I1 or I2. So in this case, if this one instead of IL, I make it VL, VL is here. So actually, VL is actually I2 times RL. So here I'm going to replace, I'm going to replace VL by I2 times VL. So again, it's very easy. So if you have any dependent source, whatever you have here, voltage or current, you have to replace it with with uh, something related to I1, I2, okay? So that your unknowns are gonna be only I1 and I2. So let's, let's, let's see how we can do. So again, here in this loop, I'm gonna apply Kirchhoff voltage law, which is very easy. So here, this, here, I1 times 10, as you see here. The voltage loop here is actually I1 minus I2, I1 minus I2 times two, okay? So here, this one is positive five, this one is negative Vx. And Vx is actually 0.5. Vx here, Vx is actually 0.5 times I2. So now this equation is only in I1 and I2. Is that okay? Same thing here. If you look at this equation here, so you have, let's, let's keep this one. I2 times 2 is here. And here, I2 times times 4 is here. Okay, here the voltage is five, negative five, so it's here. And then the current here is actually I2 minus I1, I2 minus I1, okay? Any questions? Yes? So where did you get the I2 uh, I got it from here, from here. Vx, Vx is equal to 0.5 IL, is that okay? And IL is the current here. So what is the current here? It's I2, only I2, you got it? So here Vx equal to 0.5 IL, uh, I2, okay? So I can replace, now I can remove this unknown Vx. I can put, I can put it here, I, maybe this is confusing, but, but I, I'm, I wanna make it easy. Just I'm gonna say, I'm gonna replace Vx here, I'm gonna put it 0.5 I2. Okay, I should I shouldn't put it this way. Okay, I can just replace Vx. Okay, I can replace Vx by 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 0.5 I2. So now we have one equation in I1 I2. I have a second equation in I1 I I2. So I, I need only two equations. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, here so here I make three equations, but I want anyway I will try to. Uh, uh, I, uh, I will change this slide. So here I little bit complicated. So I can see easily, I can only have two equations. If I can replace, if I can replace the x by, by 0.5 I2. By this way, I can have only two equations. I think it's much better than what I need. So anyway, I will try to, uh, to make it easier. So now I, I give you another example here. I got it from the textbook. So I uh, let, let's do it here. Um, so as you see here, we have voltage source 24. We have a current source here. This one is independent. This one is dependent, okay? And as you see here, we have unknown here, 5 IA. The current, the current here is actually 5 IA. Is that, is that okay? So 5 IA. And IA is actually the current here. IA is the current here. So what we can do here, IA is actually I, I, it can be I1 minus I2. IA is actually I1 minus I2. 
So the current here, the current here can easily become uh, five. Uh, so here, uh, here's the current, the current here is, is I2, okay? So I2 actually equal to negative five I8, because you know that the current here is five I8. The current coming this way is actually I2, they are opposite direction, so this, this is the first equation. This is the first equation that you can have. Also I A, I A, the current here is actually I1 minus I2. So I just replaced here, I replaced I A by I1 minus I2. Okay. So and then I think I so I get a relation between I1 and I2 this way. So I need one more equation. So I can get the equation, it's very easy equation from here. Okay, so here we can apply Kirchhoff voltage law here. And when I apply Kirchhoff voltage law, this one negative 24, as you see here, the current here is actually 30, 32 times I, I1. So from this equation, from this equation alone, I can get I1. From, from the equation I have here, I can get uh, I2. Once you have I1, I2, everything, uh, Everything you can uh, you can know everything. Uh, so if I apply Kirchhoff voltage here, guys, I'm gonna have unknown here, which is Vm. I don't know what's Vm. Okay. So if I apply Kirchhoff voltage law here, and that's what I did here in the last step here. So I have 32 times I2 here minus Vm. The voltage do here I don't know, but but because 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 I already uh, calculated I2 and I uh, I1 and I2, I was able to get Vm here as well. I'm going to say it again quickly. So what I'm saying here, guys, is number one, I can apply uh, Kirchhoff voltage law here, and this should be very straightforward. I can get I1, so it's I can get I1 easily. Yeah. Also, you can see the current here, which is I2, should equal to negative five I8, or five I8 equal to negative I2. Okay, and I8 actually I8, which occurs this way, is actually I1 minus I2. Yeah. And because I already was able to calculate I2 from, from this loop here, because of that, I can get I, 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 uh, I, uh, I1 here. From this equation, I can get uh, I1. Once I have I1 and I2, now what, how I can get the voltage here? Okay, so in this case, I have to apply Kirchhoff voltage to here. So the, uh, your, the voltage to here is equal to the voltage to here. So yeah, so what, I have already have I2, so I can get V. Any questions? So here in the last slide in this chapter, just uh, here I'm, I'm telling you uh, if you if I if if I don't ask you to search the question in a specific way, so now you you need to be think a little bit which approach is is more efficient than the other. Okay. So usually here I I give you some advice here when the circuit contains only current sources, maybe it's easier to use the load voltage. Okay. Why? Because in case of the load voltage, we apply Kirchhoff current law. I don't need, I don't, I don't need to beat the voltage because I'm not applying Kirchhoff voltage law. I'm applying Kirchhoff current law. I don't need to beat the voltage across the current source. This, this is a problem. Anyway, uh, so if a circuit has, uh, if the circuit has only voltage sources, it may be easier to use the mesh current method. Again, because in, in mesh current method. I'm, I'm applying Kirchhoff voltage law, and in case of voltage sources, I can get the voltage across them. Okay. Uh, if you have both of them, so now you can. There is another approach you can decide. You can decide in number of unknowns. For example, here, usually because I have here three loops, so I have three unknowns. Okay. If I use node, if I use the, if I use the node method, maybe I'm, I'm going to have only two unknowns: this node and this node. Okay, maybe no, it's gonna be also three. So you can you can compare a number of unknowns, how many unknowns? Okay. Uh, so for example, here if you have two unknowns, but if I apply Kirchhoff, uh, if you apply so for every if I you apply, for example, the first approach, you have here current here, this one unknown, one one unknown, and one unknown. So you're gonna have three. Anyway, so you can see uh, how many unknowns you will have and try to select the approach that has. Uh, list number of uh, of unknowns, okay. 
Anyway, I think that's the end of this chapter. So again, uh, to proceed to next chapter, very easy. So this chapter, all what I did in this chapter, guys, is giving giving a circle. How can you how can you analyze it? How can you get the voltage and the current every, everywhere? And all what I did is I just applied Kirchhoff Ohm's law, Kirchhoff current law, Kirchhoff voltage law to get equations. So the equation that's it. That's it. That's all, all what I did. Here. Okay, any questions? So I'm gonna say it again, guys, because I just said many minutes. So here about uh, so on on Thursday there will be a quiz. The quiz will be exactly the same thing like this circuit, but I'm gonna do very little change to this circuit, okay? And I will ask you to write the equation using the three three approaches I explained. Is that okay? Just write the equation, give me the equations, okay. I'm not going to ask you to solve this. Just give me the equation in the three approaches. Okay. And one more thing for test one. Uh, test one will be after I finish chapter five because chapter one to five somehow they are related to each other. So I'm going to make one test for, for the chapter one to five. Okay. Uh, second test will be we cover chapter six and seven because it related to each other. So yeah, but one to five. They are somehow related to each other. Anyway, so let's start chapter five. So in this chapter, I'm going to explain uh, three three uh, different theorem theorem. Uh, so first theorem, I'm going to explain. We call it superposition theorem and different different uh, theorem. Uh, but so this is a French name. They don't, I pronounce it in English, but you know, it's different it, names. So that, I think this is the name of uh, the uh, scientist who found this approach. We have also Nord, Nord, uh, Norton uh, theorem. We have source of transformation theorem, maximum power transfer theorem. So I'm going to explain this theorem. They are, they are very easy, they are not difficult. Uh, but again, um, these theorems are, are used to uh, can be used to re reduce the co complexity of solving elect electric circuits. So I, as I explained in the previous chapter, in chapter number four, I, I give you three approaches, okay? I told you one, one approach which should be enough, but in some cases, one approach may be easier or less complex than the other approaches. So here, uh, also, uh, here I'm gonna explain some theorem things that can also make it easy for us to analyze el el electric circuit. But we, these theories, the, the most important thing here is in theorem are only applied in case of linear circuits. Okay, so all the circuits we have so far are linear. Okay, when the relation between I and V is, is linear. So anyway, so let's talk about the superposition theorem. So what this theorem is, is telling us? Okay, so uh, it's it's a very easy theorem, very easy one. So what this theorem is telling us is, let me, yeah. For example, look here, guys. If you look at a circuit like this one, this circuit here has two de dependent sources. This is a, de uh, uh, sorry, independent source. We have here independent current source. We have here independent voltage source. Is that, is that okay? So what, the, what this theorem is telling us is, for example, I want to calculate the current here, okay? Just an example. I want to calculate the current here. So this theorem is telling me what you can do is you can you can only you can see what is the current here because of only one source. So I can cancel the other source. So if I have multiple sources, look at the idea. I have multiple sources. Okay. I want to calculate the current with the voltage somewhere. Okay. So what you can do. You can keep one source and get the other source. And you calculate the current, okay, because of this source. Then do the same thing for the other source. And then the final current should equal to the current of or the submission of this current. Same thing for both, make, make it easy. So in this example here, we have, we don't do that for dependent. Dependent is a different story. So here we have only two, uh, two independent, okay? I want to calculate the current here. So Ix should equal to I1 plus I2. I1 
is the current produced here only because of this source. So I have to cancel this source. So keep on source. So same thing here in this example, because I have only two sources. Okay, two again, this one is dependent. We do do that for uh, for dependent. I'm talking about independent. In this case, I have two sources. So I can keep one, cancel the other one, and then I find the current. Then keep the second one, cancel the first one, calculate the current, and the final current is actually the submission. You got what I'm saying? So very simple. <coughs> you can you can do the same thing if you have more sources. So if I, if I have 10 sources, I can only keep one, then the other ones can create the current. Then do the same thing for the second source, do the same thing for the, and so on, and then the final current is the submission of the current produced because it's like when I keep one source, I see how, how this source will contribute to the current here. And then when I keep this one, I, 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 I'm gonna see how this, how this source is gonna contribute to the current here. And then I have to add the two contributions Together, you got the idea. It's the same thing if I ask you to calculate the voltage. For example, if I have a circuit like this one and I want to calculate the voltage here, it's the same thing. I'm gonna keep keep one source. I'm gonna cancel the other one, calculate the voltage here. So this one actually is gonna give me the contribution of this of this source to the voltage here. Okay. Then I'm gonna keep the second here, the second source here. I will keep it and then I'm gonna cancel this one, and then I will calculate the voltage here. And actually, so this is the contribution of this source to the voltage here. And actually, the voltage here should equal the summation of the two contributions. So, okay. Here in this example, it's two because we have only two dependent sources. If you have 10 independent sources, so you have to do it 10 times. You got what I'm saying? So what is what is the main point here? The main point is that hopefully, hopefully, when you have one source and you can set the other one. The circuit becomes easier to calculate. You got this is the main point. So the main point here is it may be it may be too complex to calculate the current here because of these two. Again, guys, you think you can use shutter form. So again, what I'm saying here, this approach, I still I can use shutter form to calculate the current here. You need to get equation, you need to solve the equation. I'm looking, I'm looking for an easier way. That's it. Okay. So the easier way, hopefully, when I keep one source. And I cancel the other one, the circuit becomes easy to calculate. You got what I'm saying? So it's gonna be it's difficult or it's more complicated to calculate the current here when I have two sources, but uh, we hope it's gonna be easy to calculate the current here because of one source, easy to calculate the current here because of the other source alone. And then you need to add, you need to add the contribution, the two sources together. You can do you can do that for current or you can do it for voltage. It's the same thing. Okay, guys? Yes? What do you mean by cancel? That's a very good question. What do you mean by cancel? Okay. How, how you cancel? Okay. So again, you understand, I want to calculate the contribution of one source. So I'm going to give one source, I'm going to cancel the other source. What do you mean by cancel? This is a very good question. Cancel means for a voltage source, I'm going to replace it by short circuit. When I take when I take a voltage source off, I'm gonna replace it by short circuit. But when you take a current source off, I'm gonna replace it by open by open circuit. That's the meaning of cancel. So when I cancel a current source, I'm gonna replace it by open circuit. When I cancel cancel a voltage source, I'm gonna replace it by a short circuit. Okay. And again, we do that only for for independent sources. We don't do that for dependent. Okay. I will give you examples now. Any question? This is a main idea. Let's, let's have some examples now here. For example, look here, guys, I have this circuit here, okay? I wanna calculate, I wanna calculate I, the current I, okay? For sure, still you can use chapter four. I'm not teaching something, you can do in chapter four. So you still, you can use any approach I explained in chapter four, okay? You can find the equation, solve the equation, but here we are looking for an easier way to sort it, okay? So this is, we call it superposition. So superposition is telling me now, look at the circuit here. I have two sources. So it's difficult to find I when I have two sources. So now I'm gonna make two circuits. I'm gonna make two circuits. In the first circuit, I will keep the source, cancel the source. When I cancel the source, because this is a current source, I'm gonna make it open circuit, okay? And then I'm gonna calculate the current here. 
the cause of this source, impact of this source was apparent. And then I will keep the second source, I will keep the source, cancel the other one. But the way I'm going to cancel this one is actually short circuit, as you see, short circuit. And now I can calculate the current. And the final current I is actually the submission I1 plus I2. Again, the main point here, otherwise, this theorem is not important or we don't need it. The main point here, guys, is that it's easier to solve these two, two, two circuits than solving this circuit. Otherwise, I'm using the theorem to make it easy, okay? Not to make it more complicated, you understand what I'm saying? So here it's easy to solve, to get the current here, here and here to solve two circuits, so solving only one circuit. Is that okay, guys? So let's let's go. So again, I want to get the current here, so I need to get I1, which is the contribution of this source, okay? To cancel the other one by open circuit. Same thing here, I need to get I2, which is a contribution of this source to I. So I need to keep this one, cancel this one here. And then once I find I1 and I2, I'm going to I'm going to say I equal I1 plus I2. Is that okay? So let's, let's, let, how can I, how I can get I1 here in this circuit, okay? If you have a circuit like this one. This is very straight, very straightforward case. I can divide four, I can, the current here, the current here is actually four divided by the total resistance. So actually four divided by four, uh, four volt divided by four ohm plus six ohm. Is that, is that okay? So here, I don't need, it's too simple. I don't need, if you want to apply Kirchhoff voltage to you, you can do that, but it's just too simple. You have here four volt, the total resistance here is 10. So this one should be four divided by 10, over in four. So look easy. I was able, able to find I1 easily here in this case, okay? Let's look at this case here. Um, in, this, in this case here, uh, you can, uh, let me, okay. Because you may be a little bit confused here. So I want to take it to the power point. Look here, guys. So I want to calculate the current here. So actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just redraw. I'm going to re redraw this one. So it's exactly the same thing. So here you have a current source this way, and then you have a resistance, two resistance this way. Okay. So this one is, so here we have four ohm, and this one is six ohm. I'm not sure. It's exactly the same thing. So here, this resistant in parallel, this resistant in parallel. So I, I, didn't, I didn't do anything, I just redraw it. So, okay. The reason I redraw it because I, I, I want to apply, again, to, to find the cards are different ways. You can do it in different ways, okay? But uh, uh, that maybe uh, here I decided to use current, current division. If you remember current division, when you have here, I need to, I need to get the current here, I2. Okay, and I know the total current here is two, remember? So here I2 should equal the total current, which is two, okay? Times the other resistance, which is four, <coughs> divided by the submission. Okay. Okay. But here, so actually because the current source is this way, so this current this way, and this current has to be this way, okay? Because the current source is down, so uh, it has have to be up in opposite of I2. That's why it has to be negative. I'm assuming I'm assuming I2 has to be this way because I I is this way. Okay, so I1 has to be this way. I2 has to be this way. But for this circuit, what happens here actually? This circuit, the current the current will come this way and the current will come this way. Okay, that's what I2 here is negative. Okay, again. You can you can do it in different ways if you want, but but uh, so you can apply different. So this is an easy way to do it. But you for sure, if you wanna if you wanna do curse of current law, curse of voltage, whatever you do it, it's okay. But this is just the easy way. The most difficult part here, and I wish you learning is just to understand. I I you need to redraw. I need to re redraw the circuit so that you can see you can see that it's this circuit is actually like you have a source. And then you have two two resistance in parallel, and by this way I can apply current current division.
So, okay, right. So, by this way, I calculated I1. Again, the direction is very important. So, here, I, I want to calculate the current is this way, I is this way. So, here, I'm going to assume I1 is this way and I2 I is this way. But what I found, I1 was positive, but I2 is negative. That means the current will be in the other way here. Okay? So that's why when I add the two cur currents together, one is positive, one is negative, I got negative 0.4. So what this means, negative 0.4, it means I'm assuming the current is this way. The current is this way and the negative 0.4. Okay, that means actually it's going to be this way and it is 0.4. Okay. Any questions? You got the main point. So the main point is that I have a circuit. This circuit has multiple voltage source to voltage and current sources. Okay, it's too complex to calculate it this way. So I'm going to out of this circuit. I'm going to make two different two other circuits. It's easy to solve these two circuits, and then I can get the contribution. If I ask you to, as I ask you, same thing. If I ask you to give me the voltage here, all what I have to do, I have to get the voltage here plus the voltage here. It's the same thing. Okay, current or voltage. I think I got another another example here from the textbook. Okay, maybe I want to also uh, because this example has. Yeah, uh, 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 independent, independent source. Okay, so here again, when you apply Kirch, when you apply, uh, when you apply superposition, I'm not gonna apply it for the dependent source. I have two, I have two independent sources here. Okay, so this is the main circuit. So th this circuit, I wanna calculate the current here on. I wanna calculate the current on. So here, I'm gonna uh, this circuit, I'm gonna make it two circuits out of it. Okay, because I have two. The, independent sources, okay? So I'm gonna keep the first one, as you see here, I keep the first one. I'm gonna cancel the, the second one by open circuit. So it should become, this is the first circuit here. The second circuit, as you see here, I'm gonna keep the current source, I'm gonna keep the current source, and then I'm gonna cancel the voltage, voltage source by short circuit, okay? So now I have these two circuits, uh, and then all what I need to know, I need to, I need to calculate the current here, I need to calculate the current here, okay? And then I, I'm gonna add them together to give you all. So the first question, how can you calculate the current here? Okay. Uh, remember here, this one is, is, is uh, this one is three I. So I is a current flow here, okay? So in this case, this one should be three I one because the current here is I one, okay? Here in this case, this one is three I two because I two is a current here. So again, this 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 dividend source is actually three times the current flowing through three O. So when I create it, when I create this circuit, the current here, whatever you call it, here I call it I I one. So this one should be I one. Here I call it I two. So this one should be I two. Here I call it I. So this one has to be I. You got to see. So whatever the current you have here, this is the same current you have here. Is that okay? So now all what I need to know, I need to calculate I one. I need to calculate I2, okay? So uh, how can you calculate I1? There are different ways to do it, okay? Uh, what I did here, what I did here, I, uh, what, 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 what we did in the uh, textbook, we just, we, we get Kirchhoff voltage flow here. We applied Kirchhoff voltage flow here this way. By the way, there is a much easier way. There is a much easier way. Look here, what is the voltage here is zero? So because of this one is zero, what is the voltage here? It's 24. So now I know the voltage here is 24. The voltage here is zero. What is the voltage here? It is 3i, 3i1. So the voltage here is 24. The voltage here is 3i1. So I have two resistance. I know the voltage here and I know the voltage here. So instead of Kirchhoff voltage flow, I can apply Ohm's flow very easy. So the voltage 24 minus 24 minus 3i because the voltage here is 3i divided by 5 volt. That's it. So you will get the same thing. Okay. So it should equal to i. I uh, I, I should equal it. It's the same thing. So, you, so now you have equation in i, you can give i i1. Okay. Now let's let's look at this case here. How can you uh, I, I need to get the current here? Okay. So uh, to get the current current here. Uh, I can't apply a current division because current division I'm gonna apply if you have only resistor in very, very important guys, because I know 
for uh, for uh, um, because you are learning the course, you may make these uh, mistakes. So this this circuit is big difference between this circuit here and the this circuit. In this circuit, I can apply current division simply because I have two resistance in parallel. But this is not the case here. Yes, this resistance in parallel, but this resistance is not in parallel. I have another source here. I always for uh, see always this student usually makes this mistake. I submit something, and then you apply for a different case. Okay, this is a different case. This here is different from this one. So anyway, so let's see how how I can get the current here. The way I can do it, I can I can I can use Kirch of current law. So we have here current enter, current enter here, seven ampere. We have current input here, which is uh, I2, okay? I2 plus seven is equal to the current here, which is actually VA, VA minus the voltage here, VA minus the voltage here, which is three I, I2 divided by two ohm. So now I have this equation here, but there's a problem here, this equation is, I have two unknowns, I2 and VA, okay? So can we, can we do something about VA? Can, you get, can we get VA here? Okay, so yes, uh, we can. Uh, VA, the voltage here, VA, is actually equal to the voltage drop across the three ohm resistance, because this is ground, this is zero. So here, or, or I can say it in different way, zero, zero, I can apply ohms through here. Zero minus VA, equal I2 times 3 ohm. So I can get a relation between VA and, and I2. So now I have only equation in I, I2. I can I can apply it here to get uh, to get I2 and I already got I1 so I can uh, I can get R. So let, let me tell you the conclusion here before we move forward. So let me tell you the conclusion here because the first, the first term I said thank you we put it sober position in sober position, okay, this uh, this one is used only in case of linear circuits. It's not always in case of linear circuits. Okay? So in sober position here, what I'm saying, if you have multiple depend, uh, sorry, independent sources, we don't do we don't do that for dependent sources. I'm very clear. So for independent sources, okay. In instead of uh, uh, you can use shutter four to calculate the current here. Any method I explain shutter to calculate the current here, you can do that. But it may be too complex. Maybe you need to get the equation. You need to solve the equation. This one may be easier. Okay. Uh, or <laughs> this is what you have to decide which approach I have to use. I just teach different approaches. Okay. Maybe shutter four can be easier. <laughs> than, than, than using superposition, maybe, okay, depends on the case. Anyway, so here, so what we what we did here, you need to keep one source, you need to cancel the other source. Now we have one circuit, keep the second one. You have, if you have more than two sources, you have, for example, if you have um, four four independent sources, so in this case, I should have four, equi four, four circuits, okay? And then I need to get the uh, current or the voltage because of each one of them. Okay, and then I add them together. Uh, so we, I give you here another example in case of you have dependent sources. We don't do that in dependent sources. For dependent sources, you have to keep it. That's what I did in this example. I kept, I kept the dependent sources. We only cancel the, uh, uh, we only cancel the independent sources. Okay, but you, there is something here you need to learn. So here in, in this circuit. This this uh, this uh, here I need to change so the current is a voltage here is actually three times R I is the current to put three ohms here okay so here I'm gonna call it three I one because the current here is I one here the current is I two okay so that's why this one is three I two whatever the current here you whatever you name it okay so okay so here the voltage here is actually three times the current here, okay anyway. And then you can use the uh, curve of voltage law, curve of uh, uh, current law, ohms law, current division, voltage division, all the things you can do have to calculate I1 and I2. Okay. Okay. So I think that's enough for today. So I'm going to, uh, next time, I'm going to explain set definite, set definite and low. Okay. Thanks.